This video is a quick guide to the Diffuse and Sharpen module in Darktable 3.8. Diffuse for dummies, if you like. If you want any more detailed information, the theory and other explanations, there is a previous video that there is a link to there. I'm Nicholas and let's do this together. So here's the photo we will do the experimentations on to learn how to use the Diffuse or Sharpen module. Let's have a look, first of all, at the controls from top to bottom. Iterations is the number of times the module will work on top of itself. Um, so the more iterations you have, the slower and the more uh, effect you'll have. Central radius and radius span affect the wavelets. So the wavelets are the choice you deliberately make on the level of details you want to affect with the module. So with a central radius of zero, you're only affecting the very, very fine details. And with a central radius of 512, you're only affecting the kind of the very, very low frequency areas. The radius span will tell you how much away from the central radius you're prepared to go. So if I put a radius span of 40 and if I put, um, well, let's have 100, 100 on, let's type in 100, on the central radius. So we're affecting mainly the kind of um, areas of the photo which are, have a detail of 100 pixels, which is not very precise. It's quite kind of uh, smooth. And the radius of 40 means we'll go from 100 minus 40, so 60, to 100 plus 40, which is 140. So what does that mean in effect? It means that if you want to sharpen, you want to affect central radius zero with kind of a smallish radius span, depending on how much, how far away from the very fine details you want to sharpen. If you want to um, add local contrast, then you'll take kind of a, a very high central radius and a high radius span, which means you'll kind of affect the very much the smoother details. And the closer you get to the um, the closer you get to the high frequency details, the less effect it'll have, because the radius, um, I mean, the effect will be at the highest at the central radius and it will be at the lowest when you reach the radius span. And when you're out of the radius, it's zero. There's nothing that happens. If you want to denoise, then you could imagine denoising kind of details. Let's say this is an exaggeration, but 20. But you would have a radius span maybe of uh, 16 so that at the lowest details you'd affect would be 20 minus 16 is 4. So you wouldn't affect the actual high uh, frequency details. Um, so those are some examples of how to use the wavelets. Now for the diffusion speed and diffusion directionality, I do encourage you to read the documentation. Um, the four orders are different. Let's go to a practical example here. So I've done a 400% zoom on the shoes. So we can see now in practical use, um, the first and second orders are very similar and the third and fourth are very similar too. So what are they? This is how you actually uh, say whether you want to diffuse the particles. So imagine um, diffusing is like when you have a very hot object in a cold environment, then the heat will diffuse from the hot uh, areas to the cold. So like when you have a fire in a, in a cold room, you can get closer to the fire and uh, warm your hands. And the longer you wait, then um, the more the, the heat will diffuse out into the room. Um, the If you have a big fire, it will diffuse fast. So you'll have a fast speed of diffusion. So you will get um, on a picture, the, the idea is you're doing the same with light. So the picture will get blurry if it's diffusing. And if you'd move um, the direction of time backwards, so a negative time, then you are actually, um, imagine the film backwards and the heat would go from the room back into the fire. And that is how you get um, sharpness. So um, the bigger the fire, the faster, um, the heat will diffuse and the longer you wait and the more the heat will diffuse. So the iterations here, the number of iterations, we'll put this to five, would be how much time you are waiting. 
and um, so five could be five minutes whereas one would be one minute and the speed here would tell you how hot the fire is so we'll put this at 100 there we are so we're diffusing before and after we're diffusing the particles from light to dark so from hot to cold um, let's take a snapshot of that and just to show you that if I go to 100 on the second order and compare with the first order you would be hard pressed to see a difference whereas let's move the diffusion onto the third order and maybe you think there's no difference but when you compare here you can see a very clear difference is one is diffusing the high details and the other one is um, diffusing kind of the textures um, I know it's, it's difficult to um, to to explain because um, I mean the diffusion does happen a little bit everywhere but that's how it's guided anyway so I said I'd do this in a simple way so let's go back to simple things first and second order speeds let's say they do the same thing third and fourth would do more or less the same thing you'd have the first and second order would be for textures third and fourth for details now let's see how the directionality works now directionality would mean that you are diffusing across the borders or you are following you can see the borders of these are wide of these white uh, rings so if i'm diffusing across borders i'd go from white to dark and if i'm diffusing inside the borders then the colors inside the borders would actually follow and around it would follow so let's give ourselves a good diffusion of 100 and see what happens now if I say I want to follow the borders, let's take a snapshot. So this is what they call isophote. So here I'm not crossing borders, and on the other way, I'm the other way I'm trying on purpose to cross borders and not stay inside. And if you want to keep balance between the two, then you stay at zero, and it will follow and cross borders exactly um, in an identical manner. So if we compare. You can see they are actually different so there's one where it's trying to cross the borders and one where it's trying to follow the borders you can see there is a very clear difference if you look at the brighter parts of the image there now if you do the same thing on the detail level so well, let's go third order speed we'll put this to 100 plus 100 and third order an isotropy we'll put this to a thousand that's maximum it's very exaggerated um, so here i am staying inside the borders take a snapshot go outside the borders yeah so inside the borders on the left outside crossing borders on the right you can see very clearly here on the shoelaces that one of them wants to stay inside the borders and the other one wants to diffuse across so those are the differences um, that's how the sliders work now they do say in the um, in the manual in the documentation that when you do first order speed plus second order speed you mustn't exceed 100 percent and third plus fourth you mustn't exceed 100 percent either let's say now that we want to do some sharpening so uh, sorry let's get back to 400 percent back where it was so if I want to do some sharpening, then imagine, um, let's do some on the third order or the fourth order. I'll put a kind of minus 100. We'll do this in a very exaggerated manner just to understand what the module does. That is very, very strong. Minus 25. So we are sharpening here before, after. You can see I am sharpening. Now I would like to keep inside the edges because I don't want any uh, particles to cross from bright to um, to dark. So I actually have some good sharpening here, which is not so bad. Now why would I have third and fourth order? Well, the idea would be, um, if I give you a simple idea here, is that you'd control texture, noise, texture, or details, noise. If you want to remember for diffusion speeds, now the first are text textures, but you can also you can 
at the same time sharpen and diffuse and if you sharpen a lot and diffuse a little on the same um, level of detail then you're actually sharpening and not increasing the noise and on the third you sharpen on on the fourth you do some noise reduction noise reduction would be a diffusion so that is one way of sharpening let's take a snapshot of that and have a look at the details and also have a look at the noise up there so i was at minus 25 and plus 100 so the idea would be to put minus 25 on the third plus 100 on the third so this is the sharpening basically i haven't changed anything um at all i just moved from fourth to third thir fourth to third and now i'd like to do some diffusion so i'd like to diffuse a bit less so the idea would be to kind of take half the amount and for noise reduction you'd imagine that you want to diffuse in all directions now you may not see the difference but it's always better to compare I don't know if you can see, but on one side there is less noise than on the other. And there's a little bit less detail too, but uh, maybe that's a more balanced approach. It would be a way to get a balanced approach to sharpening. Now you may think that it's not doing anything now, but it actually is. Because this is before and that's after, so it's subtly um, sharpening. Now if you want me to show you what happened, if I put 10 iterations of the module, that means I just wait a bit longer for the heat to diffuse before and after. I've got some good sharpening going on. So that is the difference between the third and the fourth. So I'll say that again. First is for textures. Second is for textures. Third would be for details. And fourth is for details. And if you want to balance cancel out noise then you do the sharpening noise reduction sharpening noise reduction let's move on to the next controls which are the edge management controls so here if i go to denoise course let's do some denoising um so the image wasn't very noisy to start with but it actually does work if we have before and after if you want to see the difference there but i will take a snapshot so sharpness Sharpness is a slider that only affects the wavelet. It doesn't actually do any diffusion or sharpening in the um, in the mathematical way of this module. Um, it does not prevent any artifacts. Uh, it's very easy to actually get some. But what you can do if you're denoising is add a bit of sharpness to offset the blurring made by the denoise. So if let, let's say we'll put this to two. There you can see some sharpening that's appeared. We have before or after. Now it does add kind of artifacts. That's kind of a little bit strong. We'll put that to one. And as you see, this is very, very low if I'm just doing one. So the effect is very strong. But I do get, you see on the right hand side, a little bit of sharpness back. So that is a possibility to offset any loss of sharpness at very low values let's um, get rid of those snapshots put this back to zero now edge sensitivity okay let's reset the module uh, we can actually use a preset for um, dehaze is a good one for this so dehaze what is it doing it's sharpening on first and third is blurring on or diffusing on second and fourth, staying within the edges um, on the first and third, and diffusing, blurring in all directions equally on the second and fourth, if you've understood what we did before. No sharpness, edge sensitivity 2.5. The edge sensitivity gives a penalty to the diffuse and sharpening um, when it meets an edge so if you add edge sensitivity then the effect is lessened and if you remove edge sensitivity then the effect will be stronger so it is a way now that is a slider that i tend to use um, what i do is i take a preset if i want to make the effect stronger there are two ways to do it either you bump up the number of iterations or you can remove edge sensitivity and if you want to reduce it we just do the opposite so 
edge sensitivity is something to think about because it is a penalty to the module and it is based on edges so it's quite um it's quite good in the um in the photographic um meaning of things the edge threshold now this one is a bit more difficult to um explain it will actually say whether smooth surfaces get a boost or not um so you if i read the little text there you decrease if you want pixels on a smooth surface to get a boost so we have some smooth surfaces behind and we have some smooth surfaces in the texture so if i reduce that then they do get a boost with a lot a lot of artifacts so this one is more a way to control unwanted effects rather than to um, add sharpening or diffusion um, so if you want to lesser the effect then you make it stronger and you can see that as i do that then the effect is getting lesser um, mainly on the smoother parts of the image um, it also helps if you get some clipping in the darks if the the dark areas have too much effect now maybe we could do that if i've got some dark areas here that have too much effect normally if i increase that then the dark areas become less dark which prevents from clipping in the darks when it looks a little bit too strong so there we are that is most of what you need to know for the diffuse or sharpen the luminance um, masking threshold we'll have a look at on the whole image so let's go back to the whole image um, here we are sharpening maybe you cannot see the difference uh, before or after that's working let's take that is before take a snapshot and let's do the module there and i'm sure you can see quite a great big difference between the two so we have done quite a lot i did move the number of iterations up quite high so the effect is very strong we have an effect kind of a very um i call that clarity more than sharpening now the way it's done if i wanted to do just sharpening move the radius span down so i don't affect the areas of um, low frequency and here the effect is much lesser but i do have it on the boots here and on the leg so there we are now what does um this luminance masking threshold do if it's at zero nothing happens as soon as you move it up then you're going to get some noise some colored noise in the lighter parts of the image the further you move it up then the more um, limited the effect is so it actually only goes on the brighter parts so if i move it up i'm only on the brighter parts the brightest part is the sky and the effect there we are and at one point i can if i move it up too high then it won't affect anything in the image and this is for in painting so really what we're doing is we're adding a fake texture to um, what we'd call blown out or lost details in the highlights and the idea would be to smooth those so to diffuse so let's put everyone at um or really they should all be under 50 if i'm having all of them and the blur out you see um if i want to diffuse in all directions maybe that would be better this is the idea you're going to get the idea of what it is and we want to go to zero why not zero zero everyone at zero uh edge sensitivity let's put that very low so we can diffuse as we like and then if we bump up the number of iterations it'll get blurry and blurrier and that is maybe how you can reconstitute some kind of detail um in an area which would be um, a very high uh level of energy so um that is kind of a workaround for um anything in clipped highlights to make them a bit smoother so um there we are use the presets have a look compare the, with the presets with what you've understood that's how you, the best way to learn it take a preset and you say 
okay so what's it doing what's it doing what's it doing why are those fittings like that take another one bloom why are they like that go back to the documentation look at the video again and try and understand what we're doing with the first second third and fourth order speeds have fun with it and then um or try it on your own pictures okay well i'll see you soon